Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of Advanced WordPress Plugin Development. In the previous video, we learned about the plugin basics, what they are, why do we need them. And in this video, we are going to learn about how to create a WordPress plugin from scratch. So a plugin basically is just a PHP file with a header comment. Okay. Now you could just create a single file. Let's say you want to create a plugin called Aquila features. Okay. So you can just create this file like so, but inside of the plugins directory under WP content of WordPress. Okay. But it is highly recommended that you go ahead and create a directory with your plugin name and place all of the plugin related file inside of that. Because imagine that inside of the plugin directory, there could be other plugins as well. And it's going to get really messed up if we have, you know, your JavaScript file, your basically your assets, your CSS, JavaScript images. So it's best that you create a directory and place all your plugin related file, including the main plugin file inside of that directory. So let's do that. So I'm going to create a directory called Aquila features. You can name your plugin with whatever you want. I'm naming it as Aquila features. And then inside of this, it's good to name your file, which is your main plugin file, the same as whatever plugin name is. So in this case, Aquila features, so that's your main plugin file. And then you need to put the header comment. So if you go to the plugin handbook, it says that the minimum header requirement for your plugin is this, which is the plugin name. So if I can go over here, open the PHP tag and put my plugin name, which is Aquila features. Okay. And now if I go to WordPress dashboard and if you go under plugins, you'll notice that you have a plugin available called Aquila features and you can just activate it like so. Okay. So you can see that the plugin has been activated and you have your plugin here, but currently it doesn't do anything because you know, there's nothing in this file, but, but just to let you know that that's all that's needed. It's a minimum. That's a bare minimum requirement for a plugin. It needs to have a plugin file, which is your main file and needs to have the plugin name. But of course that's not the only thing we want. We want this to do something. So we will create some features and we are also going to add more description of what this plugin does like you can see that there are other plugins available which, which have a version number who it's created by their author uri their details page uh, the description all of that so currently it's empty because we haven't added anything in that so we're going to add that now so you go back to the okay so now we're going to add the full header comment okay so i'm gonna go ahead and copy this and i'll paste it here Okay. So, so first of all, that's the plugin name. That's great. So now if you go over here, it gives you the description of what each of these are. Uh, that's the name of the plugin, which will be displayed in the plugin list in the WordPress admin plugin URI, which should be unique URL, preferably on your own website. This must be unique to your plugin and you cannot use wordpress.org URL. So where is the plugin URL, which means that if someone wants to go ahead and understand what your plugin does, uh, or there's some information about your plugin, you need to put that URL over here. So I'll just put mine, let's say coditech.com. And then I'll say plugins and then Aquila features. Okay. In fact, we'll just keep it that way. All right. Then the description of the plugin. So what does this plugin do? Okay. Uh, so let's say, let's say it, it adds Gutenberg blocks. Okay. What's the version number of the plugin? Let's say 1.0.0, uh, requires what version of the WordPress. So what's the minimum version of the WordPress it requires? Like, uh, what's its compatibility level? What's the bare minimum of WordPress? version that your plugin can work with. So let's keep it that way for now. So that's your WordPress version. Then Rick, what is the bare minimum of the PHP version that it, that your plugin supports? Okay. So that that's something you can put there. You can put the author name. So I'll put my name over here. You can put yours, uh, then the author URI. So in my case, I'll put my 
URL slash about. Okay. And then the license, GP2, GPL version 2 or later. Uh, license URIs, that's your license URI. So then now there's something called update URIs. So notice what this says. It allows third-party plugins to avoid accidentally being overwritten with an update of a plugin or a similar name from WordPress org plugin directory. So if you click on the dev note, you'll notice that it explains the same thing as we just talked about, but it tells you the problem why it's needed. So it says that any custom plugin which use the same slug than the then a plugin hosted on WordPress org was taking a significant risk of being overwritten by an, by an update of the latter. So if the plugin was hosted somewhere else and it was using the same URL, then it, if it was using the same URL that exists for another plugin in WordPress, then it was being overwritten. So that's why uh, we need to have this update URI. So what it does is that if the value of this field matches any other URI than this or this, WordPress will not attempt to update it, okay? In our case, we don't need to do anything. In fact, we don't even need this field because we are going to be updating, we are going to be uploading this plugin onto WordPress org, okay? So, so it says over here that authors of the plugin hosted by WordPress org don't need to use this new header. Okay, because when they accept your plugin, they are going to, of course, check your slug and everything. And if there's another plugin that exists with that slug, they will just ask you to go ahead and change your slug because there's already another plugin that uses that slug. Okay, so I hope you understand. Then comes the text domain. So text domain is basically used uh, generally for translation. Uh, so we can use our text domain. Ideally, it is recommended to keep it the same name as your plugin is with the hyphen. So I'll use Aquila features. Okay, let's put it that way. So then you have the domain path. So that's for your language directory. So we'll be creating a language directory later on into our plugin. Like you can see in an example of another plugin called Faker Press that has a language directory, which includes all the pod files, translation files, right? Uh, so we're going to be creating that uh, languages directory later and that will be the domain path for that languages directory okay so it'll be inside of the root directory and slash languages so we'll come to we'll come to that when we are work, you know when we talk about the languages okay so with that now if i go back to wordpress plugin if you refresh notice that all of this information is going to be updated so refresh there you go congratulations so now it says adds Gutenberg block and that's coming from this description right here. Then it has a version number. So there you, there's your version number. It has an author URI. So if you click on, on that, it'll take you to the author URL, which is query text slash about. Then the plugin site, which means that, you know, uh, it's not, I've not created that page, but whenever you do, you know, you, that's the URL it's going to go to. So you have got all of that information here. All right, brilliant. I hope you did like the video so far. If you did, please subscribe to my channel if you aren't already. And please do style my repository to support my work and follow me on GitHub. My GitHub handle is Imran H. Sayed and my Twitter handle is Koditech. So I'm gonna see you in the next video. Thank you very much, bye-bye.